everyone. We are on the road. So in this video, before we left home, there were two big water system changes that we did. So we're gonna walk you through those. One is putting in a recirculation system with all the water coming into the camper, making sure we have the right temperature and not wasting water. So it's optimizing our water usage. And then Steve also built a custom gray tank. The, the, the first two iterations of the camper, we've made some quickie gray tanks the last couple of trips we've done and then neither one of them has been very good so now I finally got the final solution or hope to be the final solution which is going to be which is a 32 and a half gallon gray tank centered on the rear of the frame that uh, has a macerator pump built into it so I can pump the water out to wherever I want to go because uh, we got used to using pit toilets for doing our, our sewage dump and so that's something I wanted to retain. up and are actually on the road. As we mentioned, we're going to cover our new gray tank and the addition of a water recirculation system. Steve also demos fabrication of the gray tank's embedded pipe fittings. The original tank was smaller than we desired, but it did work. Unfortunately, it needed to be removed and the battery bank took its place. The method used here is the same as the cargo boxes and I will add a link to that build video. This is a demonstration of plastic forming PVC. I need some uh, fittings to uh, be a bulkhead fitting in a fiberglass tank I'm building. And what I want is this, is something uh, with a threaded end, this is three quarter pipe, with a flange on it. So I'm gonna drill a bunch of holes around this thing and I'm gonna embed this in the fiberglass resin while, when I build the tank so that will give me a, a watertight uh, threaded bung in the tank. And I'm making this from this. This is a three-quarter thread by slip fitting. Um, I've done this a number of times with, uh, I made some wall bushings with two-inch PVC. I had to make a tool to do this. This is the tool for the two-inch. This is just a piece of two-by-four that I turn with a with an interior diameter correct for a two-inch pipe, a little bit around, and then a flat flange. And what I do is I mount the bushing on the lathe, I take a heat gun to it and I heat it up while it's turning slowly and when it's warm enough I will push my tool into the part as you can see me you know getting it close here and so it doesn't take very long it's pretty simple I just I heat it up while I rotate it slowly You'll see I have a uh, variable frequency drive on my lathes here so I can get some very slow rotation. But I'm trying to heat both the inside of the pipe and the outside of the pipe. I've found that you'll see there's a, uh, a three-quarter inch nipple in the chuck. Uh, you really have to have the shoulder uh, of the chuck for the end of the bushing to ride on because when I push this uh, tool into the part, it takes a little bit of uh, force in order to do it, even though the plastic is fairly compliant. Um, it, I've tried just chucking the part, it'll just push it into the lathe. Uh, but this is the successful method. Um, I can see right now that this, this plastic is already 
uh, fairly soft. So I'm going to go ahead and test it out and, and see if this is going to work. I just lock the tailstock down and I push the tool into it. And I don't have to be very quick about it. And then I stop and I'll just let it sit there until it cools. Um, and it's virtually perfect coming off a lathe just like that. And again, I use this technique anytime I want to make a flanged part. Like I said, I make a wall bushing. I want to, in my camper, which has two and a half inch walls, if I want to put something through the wall, I don't want water to permeate into the interior of the wall. So I make a bushing, again, like this that will go on the outside of the wall to the inside of the wall and I can oftentimes also make a mating one that comes from the opposite side so I can get a very good seal on a passage through the wall. Anyway, Okay, this part's been sitting cooling for several minutes. Uh, one of the things I do uh, to make sure I have a broad flat surface is I'll take the tool out and when I turn it on, sometimes it's just a little bit off flat. I don't think it really matters but since I have the tool here to do it with Flatten that out. Clean the edge up. And oh, by the way, sometimes so there's a there's a hex nut on this side of it that interferes with my whoops my desire to have a nice round flange. I just take that off as well. And that's it. the gray tank is one of the last things we did before we left home so getting video of it in the final stages just uh, didn't meet the schedule so I'm showing it to you here now that's installed as you can see it's got a 30 degree taper on it here it comes clear to the back of the frame of the truck it runs almost up to the back of the differential it's uh, sized for 32 and a half gallons it's insulated with three quarter inches of insulation and it's mounted in and amongst this trailer hitch which is actually going to be removed eventually as well so it'll actually get moved up about another inch when it in its final configuration but uh, it, it's 36 inches wide and about 32 inches deep <coughs> by about 15 inches tall um, and it's not perfect I actually over expanded made it a little bit bigger than I probably should have but uh, it is what it is and I'm, I'm happy with it, it works well uh, the fiberglass uh, went together pretty well. Uh, I think I have a couple of video or a couple of uh, photos of the fiberglass on the inside. So this pump fitting right here goes inside and then actually picks up right at the bottom. Where as you can see, there's a drain port right there. It picks up just from the very bottom. But imagining that when the tank is full, the entire pump will be flooded because it'll be actually below be below the water level. It'll be easy to pick up and get started and. Uh, Again, it will pull out and chop up anything that's in it. Uh, we've discovered that women's long hair is one of the things that has difficulty with. And hence, it's on the outside here, so if I want to disassemble it to clean it, I can probably do that as well. Um, eventually, it'll get an insulated cover that goes along with it uh, to make sure that it doesn't get hit with rocks. Um, but for now, uh, this is the way that it's going to be operated this summer. Inside of the tank, so the, the ports on the tank, this is the drain port right here, it has a, has, has a, this is the macerator port, it has a drain port in the center if I want to drain everything out of it. The water comes on the top of it, there are three three quarter inch drains at the top front of it, one of them is a vent and two of them are entries, one for the shower and one for the, for the sinks. 
but also beside that is a stainless steel float gauge, <coughs> which registers to a, a gauge on the inside, which tells us how full it is. Uh, it's a it's a boat uh, gauge level. It's just got a, a stainless steel rod with a float on it. And the resistance changes as it goes up and down. It gauges the full depth of the of the tank, but because the tank is tapered, it doesn't uh, read completely linearly. So this is a close-up of the dispensing side of the gray tank. As you can see here, this is a hose bib connector for a, or a standard hose. And so if you want to dump the tank, what you do is you hook your hose bib hose onto here, you open this valve, and this is a macerator pump right here. It has a two-section, uh, one is a blender and one is a pump. And once you hook it up and... And turn it on it uh, will empty the entire contents of the tank and push it out the garden hose. This is the gauge assembly that I've put together for the gray tank. You can see it's got an extra socket for the freshwater tank when I get around to finishing that. Um, this assembly is a sailboat device. This is a servo motor driven uh, unit that can be adjusted to several different sensor types. The sensor in the tank is a stainless steel rod with a float that goes up and down it and then a varying resistance to the meter here. The uh, system is about, it's about a $25 gauge and about a $25 sensor, so I'm hoping that it's going to be far more accurate over time than the typical RV, you know, three or four level, uh, third full, half full, uh, which never seems to last over time. So I'm hoping that this will do that. Um, this is also completely removable from the tank if I ever wanted to take it out and clean it. Normally I keep the, uh, the system turned off. There's no reason to consume power when you're not needing it. So when you turn the switch on, not only does it turn the gauge on, but it sends power to the, to the sensor. It goes through a self-test and now it's reading the sensor level and it's actually showing that it's exactly a quarter full. And the quarter means that the sensor stick is 13 and 3 quarter inches long, so it means it's a quarter of the way up the, the 13 and 3 quarter inch long stick. In this particular case, it's, it's, it's not a quarter full because the tapered tank is maybe 10% full, and I think over time we'll get a better feeling for exactly you know whether half is well half is maybe a third full, and and three quarter is maybe maybe five eighths full, etc. Something like that. It's a nonlinear uh, problem because the tank is tapered, but it should be a long-term solution that always works consistently. Next up is the recirculation system, but first, let's show you our fresh water tank configuration. It's time to take a minute to talk about uh, the water tankage, fresh water tank situation that we're going to employ. Uh, my original intent was to build a conformal tank that would form the back seat floor deck of the truck. Uh, it was going to be fiberglass, it was going to, you know, follow the undulations of the, the floor of the truck and it was going to be nice and flat. So I decided instead to buy several different water tanks in order to put them into the truck. And... I am here on the floor, not someplace I usually am, but wanted to show you something that I think is a great idea if it's not something you've done to your camper or trailer, is put a diverter valve for your hot water. So how many times do you turn on water and you want it to be hot and you end up wasting water going back down the drain? We have now got it set up. This was one of the big projects that uh, Steve put together. He found these floor pedals. So, and then we also put one up in the shower area. But no more waiting around for water. <laughs> the shower. You sit there and you stand in the shower and drip, 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 drip. It's cold, it's cold, it's cold. Oh, okay, now I can take my shower. That's not gonna happen anymore. I'm so excited to try those out on the shower side. And then being able to have hot water just to do dishes and not sit there and wait. I was 
pretty much washing everything in cold water just because who wants to waste the water? Now I don't have to. Yes, very excited. Anyways, here, let's check out the foot pedal. This is sitting at the base of the kitchen cabinets. So when it's time to do dishes, all I have to do is step on this, diverter goes, happens, and I can let it off in about five seconds and I should have hot water coming out of the faucet. Easy peasy. We already have mixing valves installed and those uh, actually work really well. Here's the one in the bathroom sink. So same thing, we'll be able to just step on it, hold it for a few seconds, release, and the water coming out should be at temperature. And here's the diverter valve for the shower. Up here, and then when you wait your five seconds, turn it, and what water comes out should be the temperature that you want. As we mentioned, we are on the road and coming up next, we will be sharing our boondocking and exploring time. Until next week, thank you for joining us and checking out our custom camper and travels. We greatly appreciate hearing from you, especially getting questions on the rig. Click that thumbs up if you like the video and drop us a comment or question below. We'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to click that subscribe button to follow our continued progress and travels in this new rig. We're here to share and inspire others who are building and traveling in RVs. We hope to see you out on the road and good luck with your working and exploring. Music